Hello, my name is Carol May Whittick and welcome to Her Conversations Tools for the Awakening Woman. Her is an acronym for Higher Energetic Resonance. This is the optimal state to embody in order to attract our highest desires. Who is the Awakening Woman? She is a woman who's seeking a greater possibility in her reality and looking for solutions. She knows being awakened is not a lofty ideal but a necessity. If she can transform herself, she can change the world. Her conversations will introduce you to talented women who will speak to your spirituality, your sensuality and your soul. They share their stories and explain how they are in service to the world. So let their words and these conversations embolden and inspire you. My guest on this week's Her Conversations is Kat Kim, spiritual teacher, workshop leader and founder of the School of Divine Confidence. This is where she offers spiritual training and confidence coaching to non-conformist spiritual seekers, misfits and emerging leaders who are ready to come out of hiding and reclaim their confidence and personal power. A former convicted drug offender and crack addict who faced three years in state prison, her radical transformation has landed her on set with Dwayne The Rock Johnson as a contributing coach and mentor on his motivational reality TV show called Wake Up Call. She was also featured as a finalist in the New York Television Festival's Lifetime and Scripted Development Pipeline as a successful Seattle entrepreneur. During our conversation, Kat shares how after battling addiction, abuse and depression for decades, she now helps changemakers all over the world step into the best version of themselves where they can truly make a difference. So as always, I begin by asking my guests, HER is an acronym for Higher Energetic Resonance. When do you feel at your most HER? Ooh, when do I? Oh, I love that. I love the way that that was framed. Ah, very good question. Let me think. I feel like I am the most her when I am really grounded in what I call divine confidence. Mm -hmm. And for me, divine confidence is having an unshakable knowing and unshakable faith in knowing who you are and what you're here to do, Mm -hmm. regardless of what's going on in the world outside of you. Yeah. regardless of any political things or even regardless of any personal challenges that you might be going through i feel like um you can still have divine confidence even though everything on the outside is not perfect and so that knowing being grounded and um knowing who you are and what you're here to do that's when i feel like her that's the answer. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Perfect. And do you know, I, I, and I just want to ask you to just tell as much as you, you feel comfortable with about your story, because every sure. woman has a journey that gets her from where she was to where she is and, and what she's offering. So I really want to yeah. know what led you to be where you're at today. Yeah, sure. So I think my journey began when I was six years old. My mother began feeding me diet pills, and I don't remember if this was because she had asked me to, or um, I don't remember if I asked her to help me, or if it's, if it's because she wanted me to. I just remember feeling really ugly and fat and unwanted, unworthy. I remember feeling an intense pressure to change myself and conform to the standards that I was seeing around me. All by the time I was in second grade, and Thus began, I think, a lifelong struggle of low self-confidence and low self-image and really, um, really horrible, unhealthy body image issues. And I also grew up in a very abusive, um, emotionally and physically abusive environment. So I started rebelling at a very young age. And I started smoking and drinking when I was 13. I started doing hardcore drugs when I was 16. And by the time I was 18, I was dealing cocaine. And I was transporting it from Washington State to California over here. It's about a two and a half hour plane ride. And I was doing it on the plane. (laughs) And this was before 9-11. And I have to tell you, it was like one of the easiest things. The, the, The security was shit. You know, there was no security. It was easy for me to do it. And one day though, I got caught I was handcuffed. I was put behind bars and 
um, suddenly I was facing three years in state prison. Mm. And you would think this was my wake-up call, but but it wasn't. I continued to struggle um, with um, low self-esteem. I had zero confidence. Even while I was in jail, I was trying to make drug deals. And I was, um, you know, I absolutely did not care what happened to me. I had zero regard for my future and my health or my body. And um, I was just really on this downward spiral of self-destruction. And the entire time, my entire life, really, I I didn't care for myself. I didn't take care of myself. I, sh- you know, I would show up and, you know, big baggy clothes. I mean, I just thought I was the most repulsive person in town. And I walked around like that. And because I believed that about myself, I attracted repulsive, shameful experiences into my life that validated my beliefs to be true, even though um, they were false. Because that's what happens, right? We validate, we, we bring into our lives the experiences that validate our beliefs to be true, no matter how false they are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't even until many years later, after um, being in jail, I had cleaned up the drugs I cleaned up. I, I was no longer addicted to um, cocaine or crack um, or any of the narcotics, but it didn't take away my problems. This this feeling of self hate and um, disrespect for my my future for my life it continued on, and it showed up and it manifested in the form of um, emotionally abusive relationships with men who you know ridiculed my dreams, um, who put me down. And um, I was really, really depressed during this entire time. And I remember one day walking down my apartment hallway to the elevator door. And um, in front of the elevator door, there's this big mirror that hung on the wall. And as I was walking down the hall, I I glanced up and I caught a glimpse of someone standing there. And she was really, um, I don't know, she was kind of like, unkept her hair was disheveled she was wearing big baggy clothes and like on her face there was this I kind of cringed because her face was really swollen and I don't know if it was a rash or um, like cystic acne it just was really puffy and inflamed Mm -hmm. and in that moment even while I was just wallowing in my own toxicity and my depression I looked at her and I just thought at least I'm not that bad You know, I just was like, oh, at least I'm not that bad. And then it hit me like a ton of bricks that I was looking at myself in the mirror. I had become so disconnected with the woman that I was being called to be that I didn't recognize myself when I saw myself in the mirror. Mm -hmm. And that was the moment that I decided I would do everything it takes to become her, to become that woman that I was being called to be. I wanted to step into a room and have people notice me, not forget that I ever existed. You know, I wanted to be somebody, do something important, make an impact and transform lives. I did not, not be a social degenerate like I was, you know? And so I began studying everything under the sun that I could um, get my hands on when it comes to personal transformation. And so I became a um, licensed, um, a certified professional image consultant. So I began studying, you know, body style, body shapes, colors, you know, I began to learn about how to draw the essence of a woman out and translate it um, into colors and style and, you know, makeup and hair and all that. And then I became a nationally certified personal trainer where I began studying um, what the physical body goes through to undergo transformation. And then I became a, um, I went, underwent some really intensive life, transformative life coach training where I became a um, certified life coach where, you know, I began studying the mindset and how our thoughts and our emotions dictate, you know, our behaviors. And Carol, this um, quest for transformation on the outside, it kept taking me deeper and deeper inside, (laughs) ironically. And then I began um, exploring the world of spirituality all of a sudden. And, you know, I began studying metaphysics and consciousness and energy. And I became so fascinated with spiritual laws and how they impact our physical universe. And um, 
I just, I went deeper and deeper. And, and now I'm, um, you know, I became a, um, a licensed New Thought spiritual practitioner, but I am also considering um, the ministerial path right now. I'm halfway there, in fact. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so this was not planned. It was not planned. I just wanted to look good on the outside. And now I'm thinking about, um, you know, going down the ministerial path. But I do really believe that, you know, what we have inside of us and our consciousness and the thoughts and emotions and beliefs that are existing underneath the surface, that's where the work really is. And when we can get into that deep place and and be open even to um, the discomfort that comes from opening up that that kind of um, unconscious, uh, I don't know, window and looking into ourselves and seeing the pain and the suffering that we have experienced as we're growing up and also the pain and suffering that's going on um, collectively in the world. I think when we can open that door and begin to look at that, that is where the most powerful transformation lies. That is where the magic happens. That is where um, real power and in infinite endless love that's where it exists underneath all that um discomfort mm. and i think unfortunately in this world today with um you know our culture of consumerism and materialism where it's all about like buying this and buying that to be okay um that we're we've become addicted and um Many well, addicted is a good word. We have become addicted to distractions, whether it's with substance abuse, or too much Netflix, or too much social media. We are so afraid to look at the discomfort and the pain and the suffering, and instead we want to um, distract ourselves, and so we're missing out. We're really, really missing out on so much um, growth there. So now my work is it, it's really transformed into. Um, this work where I try, where I help people work through that and so that they can step into their calling as well um, to make a difference in the world. Yeah. <laughs> so it should be one of my favorite um, addictions is if you call it that, yeah, I call it that is transformation. Mm. I love watching transformation programs. I, I recently, cause I, I was out in Bali and I didn't, I kind of like shut my Netflix down and then yeah. I opened it up again and there was like a new series of Queer Eye on and I just love a transition <laughs> just yeah. from the beginning, you know, and you're watching that and you're seeing these, not only the, the guys that kind of come in and work on it, but you see that one person mm. and you see how, you know, all of the things that you've spoken about, talking about um, how they start to work on their body, whether it, you know, they just start to walk around the block or they start to eat less fast food or, and then, you know, they get taken and look at the clothes and the hair and their environment and the trans, the person that they are at that, that end of that episode. And you have to kind of like just scroll to the beginning to see where they were. Yeah that yeah. there is within everyone there's like that possibility I mean sometimes you can tell at the beginning but you can just see it already you know the things yes. that they say and you know that where they're going to be but it's like one of I've always loved programs like that because I always like to yeah. see that there's a possibility even when I was watching it just for it's like I you know, I know it can happen for myself yeah. you know so to see that and to hear that you went through the like the, the outer the image consultancy then you went into physical training yeah. and then now you're going into like spirituality and then now you're going into into ministry really it's yeah you know yeah. and you'd think sometimes that they don't go hand in hand but they oh. there's a lot of similarities isn't it I think they just absolutely got, they got there's yeah. a wedge that got put there that isn't really there yeah, absolutely. For me, it's all about like what you I think you use the word resonance. It's about, for me, I think, um, you know, when a woman is most powerful is when she is completely aligned with, you know, her, her inner calling, her inner self, when she's standing in that place of divine confidence mm -hmm. and everything about her personal image. When I say personal image, there's, it's not just how you look. There's what I call four components of your personal image. It's your a, B, B, C's. It's your appearance. It's your body language. It's your behavior and it's your communication. Mm -hmm. And when you align all those components to who you are on the inside, that is a powerful, powerful woman. And not just that, but it becomes, you, you magnetize the right people, the circumstances and the resources to you because you're, you're, you are showing up in complete resonance and alignment with who you are, which is also aligned with your calling. 
Mm -hmm. And when everything is congruent like that, people just like you, they trust you, they know you immediately. And that's the power of aligning all of that. Um, When, you know, then you see people who are, you know, when you, you you get a, you get a sense, you know, you look at someone, you're like, Oh, something's a little bit off. You know, you don't really, not really dissecting it, but you're like, you just not attracted to that person. I don't mean physically attracted, but you just, you get a sense that, Oh, I don't really want to talk to that person. If you pay attention, it's because something is out of alignment. They might be look, they might look a certain way, but their body language is communicating something different, or they might say something, but um, their behavior is the totally the opposite. Pay attention to those things. And you'll see it's because these, these pieces are out of alignment Mm -hmm. and that's, and for people, um, for women who are, you know, seeking a deep transformation, like it's that important to, to align these, these components, because that's when we show up as her, you know, (laughs) her. (laughs) And and what you're saying about attraction, it just reminded me years ago, I was a waitress in a member's bar in London. And the, this is like, kind of like Spice Girls time. And like uh, Victoria Beckham came in and it was the tiniest of places and it was very exclusive. So not many people were allowed in, in the first place, but she came in and I think she just cut her hair and just had a baby and she's kind of wearing the, the um, kind of the all in one suits that kind of, that's the phase she was going through. And I remember she walked in and this is like a really kind of dimly lit, um, members bar that was kind of like quirkily um like decorated like someone's house and from nowhere it was like nobody said anything and yet people came from out the walls and it was literally one she just had this thing where she just walked into the room I I suspect like Beyonce's got the same thing you know she didn't say anything she didn't come in with a bell it was like she walked in and people just went boom boom yeah without even realizing it and you know and of course she's got that kind of thing and and many people who exude that will just just kind of draw people out of the woodwork people that you didn't even realize people were in the room and then suddenly there's this whole crowd around I think I'd suspect as well people wouldn't even realize they were doing it it's like something drags you in and you don't even know why absolutely 100 percent yeah. yeah. And and so being aware of these, you know, how these four components align, it's it's a, it's it's like a um, you know, it's a human protection thing. We are we are geared to we are um created to know what is safe and what's not safe. Mm-hmm. So when we look at someone, for example, I mean another a completely different example is if you're walking down the street in the dark and you see someone coming at you with a bat, you know, that's also reading their personal image you are reading their appearance their body language their behavior and their communication and you know instantaneously to run you know to or get out of the way right Mm -hmm. so this natural instinct is very very primal within us to be to move towards something or to move away Mm -hmm. we've all got it with us i was curious to find out what um books you what new thought books you you'd read when you kind of were going through just like absorbing all of those? Oh, oh, well, that's a really good question. Um, and you went I, to like the old school ones, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. They're not, they're not the popular ones that, you know, people read these days. Cause I, I was in a program where I was, you know, I was in training mm. um, to get licensed and, um, let me think if I can think of something off the top of my head, I'm horrible with names and titles. Um, I've got a list yeah. here cause I've got, I've got a little thing. Let me see, because I, I was going back, I found this app. There's this guy that's got this app that puts all of them out and he's got a lot of the ones that I had from years ago. So like James Allen, Neville yep. Goddard, um, yeah. Napoleon Hill, uh, yeah. Austin Sweat Martin, um, Catherine Ponder, which is a great one. Yep. Yep. Florence Scoville Shin, that kind of crew. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yep. I've read all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Neville Goddard is one of my um, favorites. Um, Ernest Holmes also is really good. Um, and there are some uh, um, other Hello names. Nightingale. That's another one. I don't know. If yeah. That's not, I don't think I've read anything um, of, of um, Nightingales, but I know. Yeah. I've heard that um, all over. Yeah. Yeah. So you, so you're you're into new thought too. Where did you come up with this? Do you know what I I'm, I was talking about it to somebody else the other day, and it was 
it came to me, um, the first person that ever introduced it to me was like a, a guy that I was seeing and we didn't even, I didn't even see him for very long really, but he yeah. told me to get the game of life and how to play it. And oh, he was like okay. always raving about, rav- raving about that book. And like the first few times I read it, it was like, yeah, it's a nice thing, you know, mm-hmm. and I didn't really, it didn't really kind of hit me. It was just like, okay, that's interesting, but I wasn't ready for the information to kind of sink right. in. Yeah. And then and then years later, and I remember I was about to go out and visit family in Miami and I read, that's when I picked up um, Think and Grow Rich and, mm-hmm. the, and James Allen um, and Wallace Wattles, those mm-hmm. three books. And it was like, first I remember think, reading Think and Grow Rich and just kind of like, it was like the book was vibrating off me. It's like, oh, this wow. is like what, you know, and I was, mm-hmm. I was reading it too quickly to kind of really absorb it just because yeah. I just couldn't really understand what what I was getting, but I kind of really consumed those books really quickly. I went out to Miami and I remember we, the secret had just come out. Mm -hmm. So watching the secret and then on like a Thursday, Friday, something like that. And then going to church Mm -hmm. with my aunt on the Sunday and what the preacher was saying was pretty much what was in the secret. And suddenly Mm -hmm. everything went like, Oh yeah. (laughs) And it, and I'm like, this is all the same thing. So it's like, okay, so the Bible isn't so far off this. It's just, we've been learning it in a different way and been taking it so literally when a lot of it is very symbolic. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yes. So yeah. And I, I kind of uncovered all of that myself. And so I've become so fascinated with these teachings and I realized that we have been taught the, the wrong thing about God. Mm-hmm. And even on my website, on my about page, one of the first things I say in big, bold letters is that everything they've taught you about God is wrong, you know? <laughs> and so um, that's why I feel the call to, um, you know, bring these teachings out and share them with people who are ready to hear a different interpretation of what God is. Mm-hmm. And because, you know, we, we all have that God power inside of us. We all have that God intelligence, that God love inside of us. God is not a white man in heaven with a staff and, you know, judging us for, for our transgressions. God is inside of us and we have the creative power that God has. And so um, I think just in each and every one of us, we just have so much potential, so much potential. Mm. And even, you know, my, my, I was sharing my story earlier, like the vision that I had for myself, you know, I wanted to um, make an impact and transform lives for me at that time. That was absolutely impossible, absolutely impossible. But I felt a deep burning desire to become that person. And for me, that was a calling for me to step into that, um, into my power and confidence as a woman. Mm. And, um, and I believe that, 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 burning desire exists within everybody. And that burning desire is, 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 is um, divine. It's absolutely divine within us to do more and step into something um, really, really beautiful. Mm. Yeah. And I think, and, and like you say, you know, it's very easy to get distracted and, and, yes. su- and, and submerge it with food or consumerism or television and everything like that. And, and a lot of the time you don't even realize that's what you're doing. Exactly. Uh, you know, because the, 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 you're being entertained or you're being drawn away from taking time to actually notice yourself or, or kind yeah. of tap into why you're feeling not so good or, you know, kind of measure your feelings. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a great, it's a great distraction. And we've got brilliant Absolutely. distractions in this world. Yeah. And I like that you call yourself a, a spiritual nonconformist. <laughs> where, did yeah. you, where did you get to that point? Oh, you know, it's a really good question. I have always considered myself a nonconformist and I consider myself a spiritual seeker. And then I just put those two together. And then the wild thing is within a day or two, probably I came across one of Martin Luther King's um, famous sermons. And and this particular sermon was about being a nonconformist. And I thought, oh my God. It was such a beautiful sign from the universe that this is exactly what to call, you know, just, it was the name that just drew me in. And Dr. Martin Luther King talks so much about the stuff that I'm talking about here, about being very aware of the culture of consumerism that we live in and the effects of um, trying to constantly get more and more and more and more. And that, you know, our, our culture is really based on 
brainwashing us to think that we are lacking inside and that we need something outside of us Mm -hmm. to feel fulfilled. And so those distractions that we've been talking about is so much about not really um, going inwards, but seeking our comfort by buying something, (laughs) right? Drugs or clothes or food or whatever that may be. And this, you know, it distracts us from really working on the things that need to be worked on as a, as a society. And so his, his sermon about, um, you know, nonconformist, he says that, you know, we, in this, in this time, in this time of, um, where there's deep change going on, that we are not being called to conform. We are being called to, um, be nonconformists. And it, it just resonated so deeply with everything that I w- was experiencing just on my spiritual journey. And so that's where, that's where that ties in with actually with Dr. Martin Luther King. That's amazing. And there's yeah. a, there's a quote that I'm trying to recall and I can't remember who it's attributed to. And I can't remember the quote, but it's got it's got um, that being a nonconformist is the, an act of rebellion. Do you know which quote I'm trying to pull together? Do you know, no, but it, it it kind of, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, it's very much in alignment with, um, so for me, a nonconformist is someone, a spiritual nonconformist is someone who is actively um, dismantling the status quo in the way that um, feel that is aligned with their natural aptitudes and um, what they're being called to do. I think we all need to do that in our own way. And um, otherwise, we are conforming to a consumer culture that really um, keeps us addicted and codependent mm-hmm. on consuming and producing and consuming and producing. And if you notice that so much of our social ills are coming from, it's an epidemic where people are just being burnt out, they're, they're depressed. Um, especially in the Western world. I mean, in America, there's gun shootings. I mean, it's, it's, it's very, very serious. It's not something that's so far off and, you know, a different world. It's actually happening in our backyards now. And so there's something very, very um, wrong about the way that we're living right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, I boil it all down to um, um, this culture of, of trying to constantly produce, 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 and consume and consume and consume. I think that's at the crux of it. And, you know, for me, the spiritual journey is not about seeking something outside of you. It's about going inwards. Mm. That's where not only is that where you're going to find God, but that's where you're going to find your divine confidence. That's where you're going to find your purpose. That's where you're going to find your power and your beauty and your inspiration. It's all there inside of us. But we don't know that. We think it's somewhere outside and we have to buy something to make it happen. Mm. And then we just keep buying and buying and buying yeah. and get surrounded by yes. you know, all of these things and, and then wonder why it's still not, it's still not going away. Until then exactly. you have someone like then to, to talk about another program like Marie Kondo, will you, you then start to really look at yeah. these things and like, why have I got all of this stuff? You know, yes. and, and for someone who's like majorly downsized, I'm like completely always downsizing, having known that it is possible to live out of a suitcase for four months. You get yes. a little bored of seeing yourself in the same things sometimes. <laughs> but you know, it's 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 not life threatening. You know, you just kind of circle things and it can happen and you can be really self sufficient from so very little and you feel very free you just as a as a western person you know even when I was out there I was still just kind of flicking through vogue and just seeing what was happening you know through the seasons but there was no great need there wasn't that great need to go okay right this is the color now so I need to like jump on with the color so I'm there and I suppose you come it's interesting actually to find out from you as somebody who was styling shopping (laughs) yeah (laughs) shopping for a living absolutely <laughs> yeah how how that kind of, how that kind of ties into that where you're then yeah. I- introducing women to different colors as well yeah just kind of like elaborate on on that on that work yeah and um so here's the thing about the work that I did I, I, my work was about almost like what you said it's about actually taking stuff away because what we do is we bring in and we consume and we purchase all these things that we don't need that are very much out of alignment with our true selves so this you know the type of work that i do is help people find discover 
who are, you know, who are they at their core? And then help them only focus on the things that align with that. And if you, if you focus only on that, 90% of the stuff you have is useless, actually. Mm -hmm. And we only use 10% of our wardrobe. That's such, that's a fact. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, So in fact, it becomes about um, actually letting go of so much that you don't need Mm -hmm. and only, only purchasing and only, um, um, using things that are comp- that are very essential to expressing your inner self and your inner soul, and um, it was it was definitely a transition because I love beautiful things. I, I I like those types of things, but I also realize that they don't define me. I don't I don't need them. Um, I have something much more powerful inside of me that that um, defines who I am, and so and and that's that's where I derive my confidence from, you know, so it's, it's, that's the, the journey that we have to go to. We have to start looking inwards. Mm. And as a kind of backtracking onto like your personal training as well. And as a woman and, you know, the pressure that the, the, the turn of pressure that is on a woman to like fit into some, some certain shape and some certain size, even though there's a little bit more leeway than, than there used to be. And I mean, it's like loath to call Ashley Graham a plus size model because she's mm. it's like in, in, in where really, you know, she's yeah. like, she's, she doesn't strike me as plus. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but you know, to the, to the, to the eye, you know, at least we're kind of opening the door like a, a mini school more to allow a different aesthetic to be available but as you started to work on your body and get it to a shape that you really felt confident with what Mm. what what were you aspiring to in terms of were you trying to were you trying to fit into something that you thought it needed to be or how how did you like reconcile that with your with yourself and start to feel like yeah I'm there now I feel good yeah really good question because definitely I try to conform myself to the beauty standards which is impossible because I'm an Asian woman you know I'm short I'm thick and I've always been that way since I was six years old, and that's why I was taking diet pills. But you know, the, where I grew up, I was the only Asian, or maybe one of two, mm-hmm. and um, everyone else was blonde-haired and blue-eyed. And as I was growing up in my teens, I remember um, consuming these magazines. I think it was Teen Magazine. You know, you got the perfect, you know, um, white girl on the cover, and she's blue eyes, blonde hair, and I'm nothing like that nothing, you know? And so, so, so much of my struggle was about trying to somehow conform myself to look like her, um, which is impossible again, because I also have really, um, I have lots of muscle. I'm a thick girl and I tried so hard to change my body shape, but it just, it, I can't, there's no way, there's never a day where I'm going to have really, really thin legs. I just have a lot of muscle, (laughs) but I tried and I cursed my legs for Mm -hmm. so many years. And finally I was like, I can't do that. I can't change this. And I just realized, you know, well, I have this body and all I can do is make it the best that I can make it. And that's when I began to, um, um, working out and eating healthy. That's when I stopped doing, um, drugs, and stopped um, overeating. And I I slowly began to make this transformation. I began to study um, like colors and what make what colors that look good on me and my body shape. And I really just started to take what I have and make it the best that I could. And, and that's, that's where I'm at now. I just, I, you know, I have, this is my body and I'm going to make it look good and that's it, but I'll never be tall and lean. (laughs) I'll never be white, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm okay with that, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's interesting as a woman of color (laughs) to see like what's happening with everyone injecting their lips and like putting in like cement on the extreme to kind of like get this, but where, when I was younger, yeah. That was like, that was like, you know, no pun intended, but it was the butt of everyone's jokes. And I, I'm like, yeah. I'm tall. And also I, I was athletic. So I had yeah. like the big runner's thighs and everything like that. And then I had like chunky bum and like big lips and everything. And it was, yeah. it seemed to be so funny, but what now is really 
peculiar is the extremes that women who are naturally were the epitome of perfection, the slim white girls, mm. mainly are the ones who are then just augmenting, over augmenting kind of, you know, to me it yeah. looks like kind of destruction really. Cause you're, you're, you're yeah. when, when you've got, you know, your frame is kind of built for what you've got. So if you do have like a larger posterior, your, your back will curve naturally, you know, like nature knows what she's doing when she's setting you up for yeah. what she's going <laughs> to hang on your bones, you know? So it's, <laughs> it's just interesting that this is the thing. And, but, and it doesn't look, I don't know when I see someone who's done that, Mm-hmm. I always hope that I'm not staring because I'm just I'm amazed that someone would go to that extreme yeah. and you know that level of danger because people die getting this stuff yeah. done as well and mm-hmm. you can overlook the risk on your actual life life yeah. so that you can wake up and have this thing and it's you know it, it just shows how strong that messaging can be that you will overlook the fact that you're actually doing yeah. a surgical procedure on yourself right so and ahead. again, it, it goes back to this obsession and this this constant um, seeking of trying to fulfill a void within us by changing something outside of us or consuming something. Mm. It's um, it really distracts us from doing our soul work here. It's 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 an epidemic, absolutely. Mm. Mm. And you know, with the work that you're doing and. What are you always hoping to, what point are you always hoping to bring your clients and people who work with you to? What's your, I mean, I know yeah. everybody's different, but when, when someone comes to you, like, this is where I want to bring this person to. Yeah. Oh, that's another good question. Um, so have you ever watched uh, the movie with Professor X and the Wolverines? What is that movie? Do you know which one? Well, X-Men. Is it X-Men. that kind of thing? Yes. Is yeah, it? X- I have X-Men. I haven't seen, I'm, I'm kind of like out of the loop of that whole Oh, okay. Thing. Yeah. Okay. So the story behind that, um, one of my clients once called me um, Professor X. And Professor X is the, the man who created a school for these mutants. He called them the mutants. These are the, the, the you know, like Wolverine. They all have special powers, mm. uh, but they're all outcasted from society because they're not normal humans. So he, he, Professor X creates this school and he makes it a safe space for them to, to, for them to learn about what their real powers are and to let them know that even though you're different, you are here to do good in this world. And um, one of my clients said that I'm just like Professor X. And I love that because that's kind of what I do with what, uh, my school called the School of Divine Confidence. Because I've, I've realized that the person that I love, absolutely love working with is the nonconformist. It's this misfit. It's the person who never really felt like they fit in anywhere. Mm-hmm. And um, just like myself, but they know in their bones that they're here to do something important. That's the perfect person I love working with because I can spot them and I can draw out um, their gift that they're here to give um, to the world. And so I love working with that type of person and helping them see, oh my gosh, this thing that I thought was so wrong about me is actually the thing that's going to, um, this is, is actually the thing that's going to empower me. Mm. And when I see that transition and that transformation happen, um, that's just what lights me up. Great. Great. And, and yeah. yeah, it's getting someone to kind of like recognize it. They had it all along. You know, like yes. Dorothy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So good. So good. So the school of, what do you call it again? Divine confidence. The school of divine confidence. Great. Yeah. So yeah, that I've got a set of questions that I ask all of my guests, which are okay. the, um, her conversations questions basically. Okay. And the, the first one I want to ask you is what is the best piece of advice a woman has ever given to you? Um, so as I've shared with you, I really grew up with really bad body image issues and I covered my entire body. I never dressed up. And one day I was um, working um, at a really high-end clothing store and my boss wanted me to wear a skirt. And I told her, oh, but I can't wear a skirt. I don't like to show my legs. And she was really, she's a feisty, feisty woman, you know? And she was like, she put her hands on her hips and she just like, let me see your legs. 
now and I was like no I don't want to show them she's like and then she literally came to me she squatted down and she rolled up my (laughs) my pants and both pant legs and she looked at them and she was like you need to get over it right now you are gonna wear a skirt (laughs) your legs are fine and it was just a moment of like I don't even think I had a choice (laughs) you know I think she was just basically telling me and um it was just a, it was like, it's something that I carried on with me. Like, I just need to get over it. I just need to get over it. It doesn't need to be this thing that I carry with me my entire life. And um, so my signature look now is, is pencil skirts too, by the way. And, and people love my legs. <laughs> yeah. So that was actually one of the, yeah, that's the best thing I think that I can Perfect. think about. Thank you. What woman do you feel represents higher energetic resonance? Oh, you know, the two people that come to mind right away are Michelle Obama, um, Oprah Winfrey, of course, those are really obvious, but, um, but I love that there are people of color, you know, Mm. I love that, that those are the women that come to mind. And interestingly, um, just yesterday, I was Googling Asian, powerful Asian women, because I, I've i kind of, lately I've been on this journey of kind of reconnecting with my heritage and being aware of um, the lack of representation. Um, there's a lot of, I think there's a lot, you know, Black people are um, being represented a lot more, which I think is beautiful. Uh, but being Asian, you know, there's kind of this uh, feeling of not being either or, you know, the conversation is so much, uh, the race conversations at least are so much about black and white. And as an Asian woman, it feels like I don't quite fit in, you know? And so that's, you know, that's kind of just what Asian people, at least myself, we, we, you know, are challenged with. And so, um, to answer your question specifically, I have made it a point to look for, specifically look for and Google um, powerful Asian women because I realize that I don't have that image for me. That it's not represented. I don't see it. Oprah's everywhere. Michelle Obama's everywhere. But where's the Asian woman? <laughs> mm. And I, I actually discovered, I did a quick search yesterday before I had to run off to do something else, but it's not, um, it's not an easy find. It's not something that, you know, there's not a woman that pops up and I, and I recognize her. So I think, I think to, you know, really just to summarize my answer to your question is that I'm going to actually make it in a point, make it a point, a conscious effort to find a woman that looks like me that I can look up to, because there is something that happens when you recognize um, somebody in you, you know, or you recognize yourself in somebody that's really um, powerful. Sure. And it's, and it's interesting that you, you're, you're saying that because I'm, I'm thinking as well. It's, I mean, it's interesting that, you know, the, the names that always crop up when mm-hmm. I'm asking that question, the, the two names are Oprah, Michelle Obama, even, oh, even, even from white women, it's like, you know, usually like Michelle Obama, Oprah, Michelle Obama, Oprah. And it's interesting that it's women of color that are being put in that position, you know, yeah. and, and they're the, the most popular ones. But to agree with you as well, in terms of if I was to think of like Asian women or Latina women as well, yeah. there, there, are, there are nobody that there are no women that I could think of. And I'm sure yeah. they're there. I don't know if it's because they just don't kind of promote themselves or it's yeah. usually the way that they've not been they've not been given the space and the platform to kind of put yeah. themselves further because, you know, there's a stereotypical Asian type as well as there is a stereotypical and every type of women, but always with Asian women, it's always, always that they are strong mm-hmm. and, you know, they, they really want it. They really want to work for their family. They really want to yeah. be industrious. They really want to mm-hmm. be talented in terms of arts or culture or anything like that so yeah there the, the has to be them there has yeah. to be representatives of, of those women out there and, and like you say we just need to see them more yeah absolutely yeah yeah I for agree. you and also for the girls underneath you that are, yes. that are coming up that that want to have someone to aspire to and not think okay I don't look like her but you know yeah absolutely yeah, let me know who as well, you know, because I will. Something I will. Mm-hmm. I'll be, I'll be interested in just reading more about 
that. Yeah. And yeah. the other question is, what's your favorite self-care ritual and practice? Well, meditation and prayer are um, a daily habit that I have. But one of the things that I do that I make time for every, I try to do it every six months, but sometimes it doesn't work that way, but at least twice a year. Um, I go on 10 day silent meditation retreats. Have you heard of Vipassana meditation? Yes. I yeah, have. I do. I do that because it's, it's a way for me to shut everything down. Um, the internet, the world, my responsibilities and to go inwards. And I found that this practice for me has been really, really powerful. It's like a really deep surgical um, soul cleanse. Every time I come out of it, I feel like a layer of my ego has been disintegrated. And it's not easy, but um, um, I, 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 I gain tremendous value out of those retreats. Mm, beautiful. I've not been on one, but I'm, I, part of me thinks I might enjoy it too much. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. the introvert in me just goes, not talking to anybody? Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so um so what's coming up for you what's next on your um arena i know that you've also made an offer to the listeners as well that i'll put up on the website if you want to talk a bit more about that also yeah yeah yeah. um what's coming up for me first is welcoming in people into the school of divine confidence it's something that i just really enjoy doing i love creating that sacred space for people to be able to deep dive into um, their challenges. Because I think, like I said earlier, that's really where the gold is. That's really where the transformation um, happens. So this school is really about helping um, nonconformist spiritual seekers or misfits, um, emerging leaders, you know, really come out of hiding and step into the best version of themselves where they can make a difference. So that is one of the things that I'm always um, I'm always excited to talk about. And uh, also I, um, I created a free audio and I didn't even realize this was something that people wanted, but my students kept on asking me when they hear about um, some of my stories, you know, when people see me now, they're, they're usually shocked to hear that I went to jail and that I was a crack addict and that <laughs> I had all these addictions and that I, you know, made all these mistakes, but I'm pretty open about it. I'm pretty, um, I'm pretty transparent about the things that I, that um, I've done because I don't. The last thing I want people to think or assume is that that leading a spiritual life is perfect. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't want people to because I feel like that's what's being portrayed out in the world right now, and it's not. It's hard, <laughs> you know, and the, and we and we struggle, and and that's part of it. I feel like struggling and challenges are part of the spiritual journey and so they shouldn't be shunned they shouldn't be turned away from there are things that we should look we should be able to look at squarely in the eye so um, my students kept asking me well how did you overcome all of these challenges how did you overcome the shame and the guilt and so I um, I realized when they kept asking me that you know actually there is there's this question that I've always asked myself even when I was at my lowest point hitting rock bottom, there's a question that I ask myself when I ask myself this question all the time, actually. And I, for me, it's like a magical question. So this, this audio training is called from shame to confidence, how to reclaim your personal power with one magical question. Mm -hmm. And, um, um, you know, in the, in the training, I go into a little bit more context, um, to set it up. Um, but it really is the thing that I, it's the one question I've asked myself over and over and over again to help me overcome, you know, challenges such as, you know, being a convicted drug offender and, or getting an abortion or making financial mistakes. Um, this is a, something I ask myself and it always seems to set me back on my, um, set me right back on my path. And it even directs me in the, in the direction of where I should be going. So that's off. That's a free um, training that I'd love to offer your listeners and you can get that at uh, www.katkim k-a-t-k-i-m dot com forward slash shame to confidence that's one word shame to confidence beautiful thank you and I'll also link it under your episode on my website as well if, if oh, awesome. I didn't get that so there's there's no worries on that too and yeah. so so where can we find you online what your address is your social media handles and so forth yeah, um, I'm at www.catkim.com is my website. Um, on social media, just look up Cat Kim, Cat Kim Official on Instagram and Facebook, and you'll find me there. 
that's perfect just want to say thank you thank you so much Kat and sharing your story and it's been super exciting to just hear about you and speak about you I've been speaking to so many different women this week and I'm just really filled up by by what's happening so that's welcome beautiful. welcome to the her conversations club yes i love it i love what you're doing carol and whatever i can do to support you thank you for having me no problem thank you so much thanks to kat for joining me on this episode of her conversations and thank you for listening you can discover more about me by visiting my website which is carolmaywittick.com that's c-a-r-o-l-m-a-e-w-h-i-t-t-i-c-k.com And Her Life Academy is now open. So this is monthly instruction and inspiration for awakening women. It's created and created for you to magnify your spirituality, your sensuality and soul and live a life in higher energetic resonance. So go over to herlifeacademy.com or follow me on Instagram at herlifeacademy for more information. My personal social media handles, you can find me in Facebook under Carol May Wittick and my Instagram handle is Kazmik, that's C-A-Z-M-I-C-K. Also, I would appreciate you leaving a comment, liking and sharing any episodes and also if you subscribe, you'll be notified as soon as a new episode is published. So thank you again and until the next episode, have a great week and goodbye.